女生们不要害怕练胸，不要对练胸抱有错误的迷思。嗨，大家好，我是妹，欢迎来到我的 YouTube channel。你们都过得好吗？大家还记不记得，在妹很稚嫩的时候，有拍了一支在健身房的练胸影片。我健身的时候是几乎不练胸的人。那自从我开始加入这个练胸的训练之后，我的上半身变挺，变得有精神很多，然后我的上半呃上胸的部分也变得更饱满了。当时候的我真的没有想到，会有那么多的女生对练胸这个主题非常有兴趣，然后也有很多女生在这个影片上架之后，大力的感谢我说这支影片帮助他们非常多，然后现在他们也开启了练胸的路途。那时隔多年，我想要再一次的从我的自身经验出发，去翻转女性练胸的迷失。那这支影片呢，也会包含很实用的 tips 教学。我们继续看下去。首先，我想先从我的个人经验开始。还没健身的我是体脂三十趴、五十一公斤的 C 卡。那当时候呢，我是呃做了错误的瘦身法，也就是主要是透过有氧还有低热量的饮食。那那时候我的体脂降到二十一趴。呃，来到我人生最瘦的四十六到四十七公斤，那我的胸部也大幅度的缩水，大概只剩下 B 卡。那后来呢，我重新去思考到底健康的定义是什么，所以我透过重训，然后慢慢的去。增加我使用的重量，我的肌肉量提升了，那当然我的体重也微幅的上升。透过多年来增肌减脂的循环，我提升了肌力，也同时的减少脂肪。目前我的体脂约维持在十九到二十二趴，体重五十四公斤。那现在是 D cup。好，那我来 update 一下我的胸肌的状况。如果我是穿那种细肩带跟偏暴露型的 bra 的话，我的胸部真的看起来挺大的。如果我转侧面哦，因为我本身的脂肪也不是说真的到很大，所以以侧面来看。我的胸部也是蛮平的状态。正面的话，因为我练了胸肌，所以我的胸型就看起来饱满圆挺很多。也就是说，从我人生最瘦的时期到我现在 after 增肌之后，虽然体重总共上升了七到八公斤，这段时间我认真规律的锻炼，一周平均约练四到五天。那以上半身练胸的频率的话，大约是一周两次。这几年来从来没有间断过。那在饮食上，你们都知道我非常坚持吃。高蛋白、营养价值高跟少加工的食物。那以前错误减肥的时候，我会避免脂肪，但是现在呢，像是洛梨、鲑鱼、牛肉、猪肉，我都尽勇敢的吃。虽然这两个时期的体脂几乎是一样的，就腹肌的明显程度也差不多，但是我总共上升两个 cup 的原因，是因为女生的胸部主要是由脂肪、乳腺以及纤维组织所组成。那我们的胸肌位于乳房的下方，两边各有一块较大的胸大。肌以及位在旁边较小块的胸小肌，它就相当于我们的脂肪结构。胸大肌变厚，你的乳房有了稳固的支撑，自然看起来就会变得更圆挺。然而大不大还是主要跟你的体脂、基因、荷尔蒙、怀孕、哺乳有很大的关系。然后，如果你希望自己的身形看起来很吝，就是不容许有任何脂肪存在的话，我猜你的体脂大概是介于十到十五趴。那你你全身的体脂下降，当然你胸部的脂肪也会跟着下降。好，那影片的第二个部分呢，我想要请我的健身教练兼好朋友 Matt 来，呃，教学几个有效的练胸动作，并厘清一些观念。那我们继续看下去。How's my life treating you? My life is good. Wow, I bet. <laughs> 嗨，我再度跟 Matt 合体了。那他是在我健身初期就带领我的教练。那今天呢，我就会来询问他一些关于女生练胸的问题。So today I'm gonna ask you a couple of questions about women training chest. First off, I wanted to talk about the main benefits I found. So personally, I remember that in the beginning of my fitness journey, I kind of neglected the importance of training upper body, which lead to 
the imbalance of my muscles group. For example, my upper body always looks really weak, whereas my lower body looks strong. That just doesn't look nice. So when I integrate chest training into my workout, first off, I found that my posture is enhanced. And also I learned that the pectoral muscles are located underneath the breast. So when you are strengthening the muscles group, it also provides a lift to your breast sizes. Now I just wanted to know your opinions about training chest in women. So when you train chest as a woman, it will take a little bit longer to grow because when you start off you don't have much chest muscles in the beginning, right? So it will take more time to grow it. But as you said, you have to kind of balance everything. You can't just choose one muscle group and train that. Otherwise, you'll look back and go, oh, shit, I haven't got that muscle here. So I think there's a benefit for training chest, just for overall body strength, posture. Mm -hmm. But also, if you do want to give your breasts a little bit of a lift, obviously they're located under, so you will increase your, or what look like you increase your breast size. But you have to make sure that you continuously do it because it's not going to grow fast. Yeah, I truly believe that it takes years of practice and you have to do it consistently to truly see the results. And next, I wanted to ask for many beginners how to arrange their workouts and the frequency. You know, you don't want to do it too frequently because it'll take you a little bit of time to recover. Obviously, the most important thing is going to be make sure you get your techniques right and mm -hmm. make sure you get your tempos right and you can feel the muscles properly. Then what you want to do is arrange your workout about three exercises per chest workout. Any more than that, and you're probably just damaging the muscles. Yeah. So pick some big ones, some compound uh, movements, not the little ones, and I mm -hmm. think you should be okay as long as you repeat them over and over again mm -hmm. and don't change what you're doing. And how about the frequency? So twice a week will be absolutely fine. In the beginning, once is probably okay, but afterwards, if you really want to focus on that body part, twice a week would be yeah. about right. I think this question is also very vital. What if you cannot feel the chest muscles? So, as I mentioned earlier, if you're a girl, you probably haven't got that much chest muscles to start with. So it is going to be quite difficult to feel them if there's not much there to feel in the beginning. So what you want to do is focus on making sure your technique's right, not just chasing the feeling. Um, make sure that you don't just push and pull the bar. Make sure you actually stretch your chest muscles mm -hmm. and squeeze your chest muscles. Yeah. If you don't think about what you're doing, if you're just pushing and pulling, you're never going to grow anything anyway. Yeah. So it's especially in the beginning when you can't feel it, you need to be quite careful with your technique. Oh, how about the tempo? Tempo is so important because if you haven't got the right tempo, you won't be able to correct anything anyway because you don't know what you're doing. So if you're just doing this. So when I normally do chest press, as I go down, I will do it slowly and count to three to four sec three, seconds. Three to four seconds is good. And when you do any chest or shoulder exercise, you always make sure you come down with your elbow. You don't lower the weight down. That's super important. Mm -hmm. If you lower the weight down, you're probably not going to use any chest muscle. So it's always important to follow down with the elbow so you can yeah. get a good stretch. And don't push up. You need to make sure you squeeze on your way up. Mm -hmm. 你推的时候，你不是用手的力气，而是你有持续的想着你的胸肌的发力，而不是只是想着完成动作而已。The fourth question: Does training chest make women chest become square shaped, like looking like square? Yeah. People are really afraid of getting too big in muscles, but the reality is, it's probably going to be impossible for you. And this is what I was saying. You have to train it for so fucking long for you to get any results. So don't worry about your thighs getting too big or your chest getting square. Or your, I mean, it's not going to happen. Most people will never train hard enough to grow any muscle anyway. Mm -hmm. So male, yeah. male square chest. I have a story to share. Like, do you remember there was a year that I trained bench press a lot with you? Yeah. Yeah, I was like training consistently for several months just to reach like my target was 50 kilograms. That was around my weight. Yeah. And I think I eventually reached 45 kilograms. I mean, I'm saying that even though I reached this kind of strength, which is like not excellent, but I believe that like it's way better than general women. And I don't really get square shaped muscles. Yeah, but I can kind of feel relatable to those concerns because when you see some bodybuilders and their chests are like looking a little bit square shaped but that truly takes years of practice to look like that right yeah and also when you see the women bodybuilders doing it obviously they train all the day all the, all the time uh -huh. and when they diet down to super low body fat levels 
they will lose a lot of their breasts as well mm -hmm. and that's why you can see that shape a little bit more okay so last question i'm kind of not sure if this is a little bit controversial but from my observation in the global fitness industry many fitness influencers female bodybuilders they will choose breast augmentation eventually and how do you see this phenomenon so i don't really have a problem with it mm -hmm. um, if, if it makes you happy you can do it yeah um, i think when it comes to social media a lot of it's about how you look so people will be very worried about that and if they think that makes them look better and more confident then obviously go for it yeah um, so i don't really see a problem with it but just obviously make sure you know what you're doing before you dive into that um, also when it comes to like bodybuilding or something like this of course as we said when you reduce your body fat low you will lose your breasts so yeah. for them to look good on the stage of course they'll have to put something there mm -hmm. otherwise it won't look good you know mm. um, me personally i don't really care that much as a like my yeah. opinion but it's again if it makes you feel good go for it all right and i like to do a dumbbell press rather than a bench press because i think it keeps and helps you take control of both arms rather than just using a bench press but you can use a barbell as well it's just my opinion all right so make sure you hold these dumbbells properly don't hold them like this or like this all right and you want to bring the dumbbells back behind you as you go up and get them up to here now super important yeah don't lower the weights like this uh, you won't have any control of what you're doing what you want to do is twist your elbows in like this and you want to make sure you go down with your elbow not the weight okay like this and you see I did it slowly I didn't go like that are you gonna hurt yourself all right so make sure it's not like this because that's your shoulders instead I'm gonna come down with your elbows and keep your forearms facing upwards the whole time Like 45 degrees. 35. 35 degrees. <laughs> okay, and when you come up, you don't want to just push neither. Ah, pushing that. You want to come down and you want to squeeze your chest as you go up. So you can first put the Go backwards. And push. Push. There we go. Squeeze. So when you're pushing, 我一直有感覺到我的胸肌，我的視線會甚至看向我的胸。So um, what are the suggested reps? It depends. Yeah. If you're strong and the technique is great, six reps is pretty good. Yeah. If you're just beginning, ten to twelve, you can vary. My favorite is six reps. Six reps. Right, so we don't want to be like this. We want to turn our elbows in, not our wrists. Okay, so then this angle, Richard. And keep the dumbbells following your biceps the whole time. Don't let them move around. 好，那这边有几个很重要的点，就是第一个，当你预备动作的时候，你的胸就要微微的挺出来，然后。你的手的角度应该是有一点微微的成八字形，不要让它完全的平行，这样你主要会是运用到你的肩膀。然后你下降跟推出去的时候，你的动作都要放慢一点，然后记得不断的去运用到你的胸肌，而不是只是做手的动作而已。So I prefer to do cable flies rather than dumbbell flies, and the reason is if you do a dumbbell fly. When you're here, it's hard. But once you get to about here, what happens is it gets really, really easy to do it. So you don't get a good squeeze at the end. So with a cable, what will happen is it'll be hard the whole time so you get the full squeeze at the top, right? The problem with the cable is most people do it lying down. And to get the full stretch, you need to make sure that there's tension the whole time. So if you take a look at this one, we want to come down all the way. So you see when it hits the bottom like that, that means there's no tension anymore. So we're going to have to go to get it back up again. So instead, we're going to do it a different way. So what I've done instead is I've set up sitting forward because now I can get a full stretch here without that touching at the end. 
okay? So it's much better if you can do it like this because you have to make sure you got that tension. Want to make sure the cables are below the chest, not up here, all right? So don't put it too high, okay? What we want to do is make sure the elbows are inside and we want to stretch back like this nice and slowly. Do not relax, okay? And then you want to squeeze in like this, okay? So nice and slowly, big stretch. Nice. Nice. So I prefer to use cables, but if you don't have cables, you can use a flying machine. The main thing you want to make sure of is that your hands are below your chest, not up high, all right? And when you're doing it, you want to make sure you get a full stretch back. You don't want to just come to here, all right? Also, when you're squeezing it, you're squeezing with your chest. You're not pushing with your arms like this. You need to make sure that your elbows are inside so your chest is squeezing. I'll show you just one. You don't want to try and do that, otherwise you're going to start to use your shoulders. Elbow inside. There. Boom. Stretch. So do you have to go slow? You always want to go slow on the eccentric, right? So we're at about 50% stronger on the eccentric than we are with a push. So you don't want to go like this. Of course you're going to lose control and also you might get injured as well. So you've got to slow everything down, right? So we're gonna do a push-up, right? The push-up's a good one because one, it's a chest exercise, two, you can do it at home or anywhere, and three, it's easy to make progress with it. You don't need any weights and stuff, okay? Now, what a lot of people do is they start to do push-ups, we call them girl push-ups, and they do them like this. Now, the problem with this kind of push-up is you barely use any chest, so it's actually not a good progression. So I'm gonna show you a better way to do it. It is hard, but if you stick at it, you'll get a full push-up pretty quickly. So what I'd rather you do is get yourself into a, a plank position like this with your hands level with your chest. Now it's important you keep your feet together and you do not relax your body like this, okay? You have to actually use your chest so when you're going down, you still have to think about going down and stretching your chest. You don't want to go down like this and lower your body, otherwise you're not going to engage any chest muscles. And you also do not want to be trying to push yourself up. So we don't want to actually even try and push ourselves at all. What we're going to do is go down slowly. And then come back up again. If we try and push up, you're probably just going to get to there. And what's gonna happen is you're only gonna get strong here and you're gonna get weaker there. So eventually you're gonna have to go and back and do it again. What you're probably gonna do wrong is this. All right, now if you do that, obviously there's no chest involved, okay? You have to make sure your chest touches the ground before your hip, okay? The next thing that's gonna happen is this. And you're gonna fall straight down, all right? You have to make sure you take some control. At the bottom is where you wanna go slowest. So what if they can only go down halfway? You keep on going down all the way. But they just don't have the strength to go down that deep. Then you don't want, you're just gonna let yourself go. But it's important that you don't let yourself go, you still try. And slowly but surely, you'll go lower and lower and lower with control. So if you're going down to here, slowly, and you don't have the strength, don't just relax. Keep on, don't, don't just relax. Keep on trying to do it. Yeah, and then what will happen is eventually, you'll get lower and lower and lower and lower and lower until you can do it slow all the way. Once you can start doing it slow all the way, you can slow that down and eventually you'll be able to do a full push-up. This is the best way to do it. Okay, so a proper push-up, a full push-up, a lot of people think they can do one, actually can't, all right? Now, one of the things people do wrong is they stick their elbows out like this. That means you're not using any chest, okay? So you need to make sure your elbows are tucked in. You don't want to do your push-up like this. You want to bring your elbows in so you can engage your chest, all right? So a lot of people do this. They think they're doing a push-up, but they're not, all right? The other thing that people do is they don't go all the way down. They go to about here and it gets hard and they push back up again, okay? Another thing people do is they try and touch their nose to the ground. As you can see, you're not all the way down, okay? So what you wanna do is make sure your chest touches the floor just, 
not your hips. So when you do a push-up, you do it like this. Chest to the ground. Chest to the ground. If you, if you want to get better at anything, and that's your main focus, do it as often as you can. Don't worry about recovery from like one movement. You're not going to need it. So if you've got a goal to do a push-up, do eccentric push-ups every morning or every night, every day. That's how you'll get with it. 那最后我有些话想要跟大家分享。那我拍这支影片的用意不是要 guarantee 你们练胸一定会让胸部变大、胸型变好看。虽然我觉得那个是你之后一定会感受到的附加的成果。主要我想要表达的用意是，我希望可以再度的鼓励女生们不要害怕练胸，不要对练胸抱有错误的迷思。因为我觉得现在还是很多女生听到练胸会害怕。会抗拒使用重量，或者是觉得练一练是不是会变得很像男生很大只，胸部会变方形，会变小等等的错误迷思。我希望可以透过这支影片，还有上一支影片，都可以让大家有一个更好的观念理清。除此之外，我想要补充几点。那教练有示范几个动作嘛？那我个人的话，我最常做的动作就是哑铃的卧推。那我一手平均是使用十二到十五公斤，然后做六到八。我也喜欢做飞鸟，还有机械式的推胸跟蝴蝶机夹胸、伏地挺身等等的动作。那在训练的安排呢？我有时候我会把练胸的几个动作放在我的下半身训练。之后，所以它就会变成有点像全身性的训练日。然后我觉得你不一定要单独安排一个练胸日，除非你是进阶者，不然你不太可能有那个肌耐力，一个小时都在练胸减重。但你可以安排一个上半身日，可能有包含练背、练胸、练肩膀、练核心。我觉得这个会是对初学者来说比较好的菜单安排。然后在饮食的部分，很重要的是不要节食。就如果你你想要看到胸肌的成长的话，你还是要去遵守能量。守恒的概念，也就是说，你摄取的热量应该要大于你所消耗的热量，的肌肉才会有所成长。但是，如果你自己的目标目前是放在减脂期的话，你还是可以多多。做练胸的动作，它可以帮助维持你的胸部的形状，会让你的胸部形状不至于看起来瘦得那么快。减脂的时候也注意不要大幅的减少所摄取的卡路里，大约是将 T D E E 减掉两百大卡。那如果你想要增肌，看到胸肌有所成长的话，会建议你摄取大概 T D E， 再加上200到300大卡的热量，就是遵守高蛋白，摄取优质脂肪，然后也不要害怕吃碳水。那我相信在坚持3到6个月之后，一定会看到一些不一样的结果。大家就保持这个信念，继续锻炼下去。那有什么问题的话，也可以在下面留言。那谢谢你的观看，我们下次再见，拜拜。